Hey guys, our guest today on the Fearless Investor Podcast was a YouTube sensation in window washing. That's right. And now he is a pro wholesaler. He's putting out tons of free content on YouTube. Can't wait to get to it with Zach Booth today on the Fearless Investor Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome in. Once again, you're listening to me, Kyle Stanley, and crazy, crazy uh, story today from our guest who is Zach Booth. And he is really just one of, to me, like one of the best signs of giving away information, helping people and not expecting anything in return, but getting a ton back in return because of what he's putting out in the universe. Uh, but his story is crazy. He used to be a window washer. You'll hear his story. He started at a very young age and then turned into a real estate investor, could have given up many different times and just stuck with it. And that's one thing I really want you to stick with here on this show is that if you are listening, you're just wondering, man, I just can't get my first Airbnb deal. I can't get my first flip deal. I can't get my first wholesale deal. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. Just listen to the story. You're going to hear how this guy could have given up so many different times. But one of the things that he talks about is having a mentor. And so if you need a mentor, if you need to be able to get that help that you need in the process, especially for Airbnb, you know, that's me. Um, just start schedule a call with me right here on the Fearless Investor um, website, which is fearlesskyle.com forward slash consultation. And you can have 15 minutes absolutely free with me. We can talk about what a mentorship program looks like with me. We're getting great results from our students. One just recently uh, worked with me for one week and just got his first deal under contract. That was after just one call that we had and uh, it just completely opened up his mind to what he was missing in his business. So once again, fearlesskyle.com forward slash consultation. would love to be able to talk to you. But as for now, let's talk about wholesaling with the window washer himself, Zach Booth. Hey, what's going on, guys? Really excited to have uh, Zach Booth with us today. And uh, I'm just excited for uh, learning some window washing tips. Uh, Zach, you bringing us some of those window washing <laughs> tips today? <laughs> you know, I could. I definitely could. Uh, that's funny. Uh, well, good, man. Hey, I, I always start off with this, and I know you've done a lot of deals. Um, I know you've got a very interesting story in the background. We're going to get to that in a second. But you know, just kind of give us what what is like one – main real estate investing story that just sticks out in your mind? Um, something interesting, something weird, or maybe something that you got a good um, learning lesson from? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think some of the most impactful moments in an investor's life is our first deals. Yeah. Right. Because it brings this confidence, this, um, excuse Excuse me. Uh, give, it brings this confidence. It brings this feeling of like, hey, it exists. Hey, it can be done. Hey, I actually am capable. So um, I'll just put you kind of where I was. I had paid $10,000 for a course to teach me how to wholesale. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't do a deal from it. Wow. And then I started believing that I didn't, not only did I not do a deal, I wasn't ever talking to motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. And so then I started thinking maybe these gurus Maybe they're just like selling a dream and they're just con artists mm. at heart, which is so sad because right. I now, I've had mentors and I've had tons of mentors now that I have nothing but love and respect for. But anyways, I was, at the, I was in that headspace and maybe some people can relate, right? I was in that headspace and I was still washing windows and uh, washing lots and lots of windows. <laughs> And I was working for wealthy people, right? Cleaning their beautiful mansions. And I got talking to this guy, found out he's a multi, or sorry, a developer. Uh, he'd pick up raw land and build uh, residential neighborhoods. And just super wealthy, older guy, really brilliant. And I started talking to him and he, he's like, oh, and at the end of the conversation, I said, I, I would love to buy a couple of rentals. And he's like, oh, that's convenient. I have these two properties. They're one acre each. I'll sell them to you at a great price um, at a half a million, which was at a ma massive discount for those two properties. Okay. And he's like, I was like, okay, great. But I'm a window cleaner. I can't get a loan for half a million. And he's like, oh, I'll be the bank. How much can you put down? I was like, I'm a window cleaner. I can't put that much down. <laughs> You know, I'm a window, and I didn't know about wholesaling. I didn't know I could get the contract and sell the right. contract. Yeah. Right. And so, but, but he's like, I can be the bank. That's fine. We'll just deed them over to you. And he, and he like pulls out a white paper and starts writing the agreement. Oh my and I'm gosh. like, dude, don't, don't we need like an attorney? Like I was trying to talk him out of signing the papers. I was freaking terrified. But anyways, long story short, I closed on these properties. We put tenants in place. I was making like over 800 bucks a month just passively with tenants in place Sweet. and I ended up selling them, um, selling them off two years down the road for over a hundred thousand dollars profit as nice. is. I never did any work to them. 
And so wow. like that experience, not only did I make a lot of money, which was cool, right? Who doesn't right. like to have some money, but more than anything, my eyes were open that people trade convenience for prize. People, because they like you and it's a convenience factor, they'll mm. give you a great deal. And it was, and it was so cool because he was so much smarter than me, so much more experienced than me. Like it was truly an eye opening experience that, wow, if I can get good at finding people like this and building those relationships, I can make an absolute fortune and walk away from window cleaning. That's amazing. Well, so there's so many good nuggets there, but I, I want to get the story of Zach before I really start diving into some of the things that you said there. So, you know, take us back. I mean, you, you were doing YouTube even when you were doing the, uh, the window cleaning stuff. So, I mean, like, has there always just been this spirit in you of wanting to share the knowledge, share the wealth of what you're doing? Cause now today as a wholesaler, you're doing the exact same thing. You got a huge YouTube channel where you're po you know, posting a ton of content and helping other people out. So, uh, but like, where, where did that come from? Yeah. So going back, I, I, I was raised by a really like, you know, soldier type father, mm -hmm. you know, he grew up pretty rough background, but he was pretty hard on us. You know, he didn't, he didn't take crap. He didn't, you know, you never talk back to my dad. My dad worked us hard. We had a lawn mowing business growing up. So my dad worked his full-time job. We were expected to get good grades. We'd come home, we'd go to work. And mm -hmm. I mowed lawns and did yard care from time I was 11 um, until I was 15. Uh, and then I started doing construction and I had lots of different jobs. My dad at 16 cut me off financially. And so he kind of was like, okay, wow. son, it's time to do your thing. Um, you know, he paid for my housing and food, but if I wanted to do extracurricular activities like basketball in high school, I bought my own shoes. I paid for this, for the, you know, the, the stuff, the camps, whatever I wanted to do. Um, it made me learn to budget. And also it made me hungry to not work for an hourly wage. Yeah. You know, by the time I was 17, I had made cheese, at, you know, I'd made handcrafted cheese at a cheese company. I'd worked at a wood mill, framed houses, did finish carpentry, yard care, landscaped in Nova Scotia, Canada for a summer. Um, I had done taxidermy. I had had all these different jobs and I learned that some bosses I couldn't stand and I hated and I had bosses that I loved and respected. And I also learned that I could work really hard. And I was like, well, I'll just start my own business. Right? Yeah. That was so much easier. So I started a window cleaning business when I was 17. Started wow. to get, you know, went door to door from my parents' house to not pay for gas because I was so out of money after buying my truck cash and everything and all the equipment to start. And um, I remember the first day I did a bid for 30 bucks. I was like, oh, I'm going to make that in an hour. I've never made that much money in an hour in my <laughs> life, you know? And then, and then I did $100 in a day. And then I did $1,000 in a day. And then I did $2,000 in a day washing windows, right? I got to the point where I can make over $100 an hour washing windows. Wow. That's awesome. At and, 17 years old too. That's amazing. Yeah. When I was 17, man, I was taking girls to like $100 plate dinners, <laughs> like... I was, I was high rolling. You were right? popular in high school. <laughs> no, I wasn't popular, but I had money, right? Um, but anyways, I, I, I learned about making money young. And what happened was I, I, you know, you asked about the YouTube thing and like business and I, and I got into, you know, no, at 18, I got my business license on my birthday because then I could get the bigger contracts and get like the big credit unions across the state. And we did well. Um, but I, I, I eventually grew it to where I had like 13 employees, three trucks. Um, you know, from the outside looking in, I was successful. Um, and I created a YouTube video, YouTube videos, tutorial videos on cleaning techniques and what I learned to be so fast and efficient to train mm. employees because I had such high turnover. I wanted them to have homework to do when they're not on the job right, site. Right. When those YouTube videos blew up, one video now has over 10 million views. That's crazy. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy. That video has like 20,000 comments at this point. Oh my gosh. Right. And it's pretty funny because mo like so many of the comments are just, you have so much passion. You like, you, you want to like, like, you know, and it's funny. It's like, <laughs> I didn't create those videos for them. I created for employees. I thought maybe you'd have 10 views ever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it wasn't for that. It was, it was just kind of interesting. Like, and we talked about this off air with your podcast, how interesting it is when we like put out information, when we put out something to serve other people, mm -hmm. whether by accident, my YouTube channel or on purpose, like it brings so much value back to us. Yep. Um, but that's kind of how I got into, into the YouTube thing was, was be, on accident, I guess. And then I realized I like it and I'm actually really good at teaching, I guess. 
You, you and I have a similar story. I also had a very strict dad growing up who taught me a lot about finances and um, taught me the value of a dollar. And um, it, there's so many things we could probably relate on there. But I also, like the first video that ever went viral for me has nothing to do with real estate investing. It was a video that a baseball catcher we made teaching how to block a ball and it got like 500,000 views in like one summer and that video still pays me today it's, it's so so crazy how that's youtube is an amazing thing by the way like uh, and right. and i think we could probably talk about that for a while too but what have you seen the power of not just youtube but the power of sharing knowledge um of what you do and and giving back without expecting anything back what have you seen that do to your business yeah, such a such an awesome question. So we're kind of like bouncing around in different parts of my story. So this yeah. was about, uh, this was my end of my second year as an investor. I had walked away from window cleaning. First year we did six figures, just barely, and obviously not profits. That's gross. Mm -hmm. Maybe like thirty thousand in income. Struggling investor, right? Mm -hmm. I discovered something that completely changed my business. And we could talk about that if you want to, but at the end of that year, we hit just shy of a half a million. Wow. Right. And I was able to go in and pay off like write a $50,000 check, pay off debt, take my wife on vacation. Like my life was like completely changed, like from a broke window cleaner to a broke investor to boom, my life changes. Right. But at the end of that year, I thought like I hit the lottery. Like I don't even know if I can sustain this, let alone grow this. And so at the end of that year, I was like, well, let's shoot for the stars, right? Let's, let, let's go for a million dollars next year mm. and, and not, and having no clue how to do it. But I set that as a goal and I'm very goal oriented and I really believe in what I set my mind to. And so then I just started scanning, right? And, and uh, I started looking like, how can I, how can I achieve that? What can I do? And I had a friend invite me to do a self-help journal called living your best year ever. And it's all about creating three big goals in doc documenting day to day what you're doing. And there's like the first hundred pages like prepares you to be successful at those three goals. So I was like, of course, let's do it because I have some big goals. I need extra, the, all the help I can get. In that first hundred pages, it talks a bit about you have to give away what you want to receive. Mm. So I wanted to make a million. So I had to give a million. Mm. Wow. But I have a million to give, right? but I wanted to take it serious. So it's like, how do I give away a million dollars? I was like, well, I have a marketing strategy for newbie real estate investors that generated a half a million dollars in my business. Why don't I just find like 10 people? I teach them. I give some time and, and energy to them and the universe or whatever this book is saying <laughs> will help me that. achieve my goal. Yeah. The craziest thing ever happened. There's two main things that happened. First, uh, the more I taught, the more I learned. The more I realized the holes in my marketing strategy, the more I realized the holes in my business in general. At the end of that year, we did $1.2 million. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so that was amazing. But the second thing that I got out of this, which was much more important to me and more special to me, more fulfilling, more profitable, everything than that $1.2 million was my students was my students started crushing it. Scott Dowinger, his very first deal, very first investment deal, one point, or sorry, um, a $113,000 profit. Quit his job. Wow. Newbie, never done a deal. Oh my 113, God. 113, right? And another student had bought a course, never, you know, never done a deal, frustrated, put nine grand into a course, never did a deal. His first two months in, he does two deals making over 50 grand. Mm. Right. St my students just start making life changing money. And, and the cool thing is when you do your first deal, like there's this, like, you want to, you know, share your check and tell your family and like, you've worked so hard and you feel like you've cracked the code. And you kind of talked about this when you started having your success, you're like, Oh, I cracked the code. Like, wow, this is crazy. But all of a sudden it just becomes a job and you keep teaching, you know, and you keep doing it and you keep duplicating it. And I can't tell you what my third, fifth, sixth, tenth, I can't even tell you all the deals I have under contract right now. I can't. Mm. Yeah, it's not as exciting anymore. Right. I have, I have over a hundred thousand dollars pending in contracts, well over, probably close to wow. 200,000. And I couldn't even tell you all of them. I, I couldn't even tell you probably one full address. Right. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not bragging about that. I'm just saying like it loses that like that emotion behind it. Right. But when my student does their first deal, mm. dude, it's like doing the first deal all over again. Yeah. Because I know what it means to them. I know what it 
means to their family. Like there's a purpose, like there's a, there's a, there's a helper's high. Right. And so, so yeah, that was by giving back. That's the, you know, that's a huge part of my life now. Huge part. of That's awesome. That's so good. And it's, it's so true. It's such a, a tough thing to really truly buy into until you see the fruit of it. Um, at least for me, it was, I mean, long story short, when I got into real estate and I was at these meetup groups and I was kind of doing Airbnb on the side and I had two properties, they're making me over a thousand dollars net profit per month. And I'm thinking like these guys standing up there that have, you know, 50, 60 properties and they're bragging about $200 of cash flow per property. I'm going to get there in 10 properties. They're going to, they're, you know, what they're doing in 50, I, I can do in 10. And then I keep hearing them talk about, you got to have an abundancy mindset. I gave away so much information and I'm just like, oh, do I really have to tell people this? And then I did and I really bought into that and it's crazy what that has given back. So I, I'm glad that you are, are a believer in that as well. But you, you talked about um, something there and, and I want to I wanna actually back it up for a second because you're right, we jumped a little bit uh, from spot to spot here. That's you okay. Said yeah, your I love first, it. I think it's kind of fun. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you said your first deal was, you know, this long-term rental that eventually paid off a couple of years down the road, but your big thing is wholesaling. So what got you into wholesaling? Um, what did you see about wholesaling that made you really want to dive in? Yeah. So I, that, that was my first motivated seller that I bought off market, but I had done a flip and lost money. I had bought a duplex that I was living in one half and renting the other that I had bought from the MLS that I was doing well. So I had dabbled in it right? I was reading books, listening to podcasts. I was trying to break this code. Where do I start? And there was information overload. And I'm sure so many listeners can, can relate, right? And I didn't know where to go, what would work, what wouldn't work. And, um, you know, I kept hitting barriers. Well, I didn't have money to buy more rentals. I didn't have down payments. I didn't have debt to income. I had all these issues to get into rentals. It's like, okay, well, that might not work. Then I tried flipping and started borrowing, trying to borrow money for my rich uh, window cleaning clients, which I did on that one deal, but I lost money. Right. So that didn't work. So I was like, well, I didn't like, that's fun. Like not only, not only did I lose money, but I really hate overseeing flips. Okay. I hate it. I hated it worse than window washing. I was like, all right, that's not for me. Right. Right? Okay. So I I was like, okay, well like, uh, do I just give up? Like, what do I do? And, and uh, I heard about wholesaling. Right. And I paid that first mentor $10,000 that I never did a deal to teach me how to wholesale. And wholesaling is where you, you know, you find a deeply discounted property, you take zero risk to make money off of it. And you do that by having a purchase contract that you can sell to a different investor. Mm -hmm. So you put it under contract, sell the contract for a fee. And I was like, I want to do that. That sounds awesome. That's just marketing and then talking to sellers and getting the contract. That's super simple. I could do that. And you know, ten thousand dollars later on the coach, four or five thousand dollars in marketing. Then I signed a thirty thousand dollar marketing contract, and then never got a lead, never did a deal, and I'm Jeez. like way into debt and credit card debt, painful, right? Mm-hmm. And that's when I gave up. But then I had that experience with that motivated seller, right? And yep. I was like, oh wow, like it does exist. People do sell for speed and convenience. I just gotta find them. Is it just like is this one in a billion, or is this, or is this exist? more found a new mentor and the first two months of hiring that next mentor which was nine thousand dollars i uh i did find another motivated seller situation was the partnership um these two guys had over 100 rentals at one point and it was their very last rental they held together their partnership had gone sour they just wanted to liquidate and they said we'll take eighty thousand for it's the lowest we go we know it's a discount we want it gone put it under contract through docusign never met either of them Okay. Sent it out to my cash buyers list. I sold that purchase contract for ten thousand dollars. Nice. Yeah. And so I was like, wow, this, this this is great. You know. There you go. And at that point, I had walked away from window cleaning, um, and you know, kind of keeping it simple. That first twelve, you know, it was actually like first nine full months. You know, I did I did about a hundred thousand dollars. That next fiscal year is when we did just shy of half a million. The year after that, we did one point two. Um, and so, you know, getting to that point, uh, the, the big thing that took me from that 100000 to that half a million uh, was learning about a marketing strategy called driving for dollars, right? Mm. And yeah. I'm doing it, and, and people, most people know what that is. You basically drive around, find ugly houses, find out who owns it, and then ask them if they want to sell. Easy three steps, right? But 
but traditionally you had to like look it up on county records. It took forever to build a list of any size. With the tools right. and systems that, that we've put together and organized, we're adding over 2,000 properties every single week to our marketing list. Wow. And that's with one person. One person does that for me. And so it doesn't require like a giant team or anything. And that's what I started teaching people and exactly how we do that. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's been the big, big game changer. Absolutely. So just to kind of dumb it down, marketing or driving for dollars, um, you said you're putting a list together and then essentially just driving around and knocking on those doors. Where are you getting those lists? Um, what types of lists do you like to look for? Yeah. So I'll explain it this way. When someone, when someone wants speed and convenience for their house, it's like they want a pawn shop for their house, right? People that sell stuff to a pawn shop, they know that it's a convenience factor. They know that pawn shop wants to profit. When someone sells a house to an investor, they know the investor's trying to make money, mm -hmm. right? But they know there's a convenience factor. In right. So when someone has a property that they want to sell for convenience, that property is a thorn in their side, right? right. So people that are burnout landlords, people that have rundown houses, don't want to deal with fixing them up, listing with an agent, people that inherit properties, those kinds of people, they have properties that are thorns in their sides, right? And if people have a house that's a thorn in their side, are they going to mow the grass and fertilize and water nope. and, you know, fix the siding that blew off? No, they're going to put duct tape on the cracked window, right? <laughs> they're going to put a blue tarp on the roof. Yep. They're going to let the grass die. So you can physically see these you know, burnout property owners. So you drive around and accumulate those and we use an app called Deal Machine. Yep. Um, if you use this app, you can use my discount code PIN, P-I-N, which will give you two months free of the route tracking software, which is essential. But we'd use that um, with a few other techniques and things to, to really um, automate that. And I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel and, and so forth. Um, you know, I, I think it's important for, for people to understand that um, you know, I am a coach. Yes. Yes. I, I, I'm not on this podcast to pitch. I'm not here to be like, Hey, come sign up for my program. It's only 997. You know what I mean? I'm not doing that. Um, like I, I believe in truly giving back. That's why I'm here. I, I believe that so much. So if you go to my website, um, it's uh, dfdmastery.com. Uh, that website, you can actually get access to all my free resources. So in that website, if you go to free resources, there is a full wholesaling course for absolutely free. It's amazing. Um, which is, which is amazing. I paid yeah. $10,000 and then $9,000 for a wholesaling course. I believe this wholesaling course I give you guys is even better because I do talk about the best marketing strategy that there is. Yes, I have paid clients, but I only have a certain amount because when, when someone pays me money to mentor them, my goal is to get them a deal. My goal is to change their life. So, so much so that every time I, I have a new student come on, I have a picture of them printed out with their name and their market and it goes on my wall in my office. So I'm surrounded by my students it's good. that I have responsibility to change their life. Once we get them going and they're doing deals, I put them out on my success wall in my main lobby. So my goal is to get them off of my back, literally, and onto the success wall. Like having the, the devil and the angel on both sides talking <laughs> yeah, to you, right? They're like, Zach, you need to help me, <laughs> Zach. And it's like, if I haven't heard from these people, I'm reaching out, you know? So, so I do limit the amount of students I bring on. Okay. Um, and, and just for the fact that I only have so much time to give to these people, right? So I, my goal is like, okay, well, I can only coach so many people. Why don't I like help in like a broad aspect as much as I can? Um, I am doing another free uh, thing for, for anyone that's interested in watching this. So I'm going to Florida in January. We talked about this off air, right? I'm going to uh, Florida in January. I'm going to take a thousand dollars and my film crew, and they're going to document me uh, turning that thousand dollars into $40,000 in 40 days that's using cool. the strategies that I teach. That is so cool. Well, and I know I'm going to go look for this for you, but I might as well talk about it on this podcast too. If you're watching, we're, we're actually going to air this in a week, so it's not going to take very long for us to air this. But um, if you're watching right now and you know someone in Tampa, Florida that has an Airbnb and would like to help out Zach, please message uh, me, DM me. Um, I'll send over to Zach or Zach, how can people connect with you? Uh, what's the easiest way for them to be able to connect with you? Love it. Yeah. So I, uh, my website, dfdmastery.com, you, there's links to all my social media accounts. Uh, so my YouTube accounts linked there. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm going to, excuse me, air this adventure. Um, 
And then if, if you want to message me through Facebook or Instagram, through Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, you can message me that way. You can also email me at Zach at DFDMastery.com. Um, so that, that'd be the best ways. Cool. Well, hopefully the fearless investor audience will find an Airbnb and help you get, get set up. Yeah, my goal, there. my goal is to be in Brandon somewhere. Okay. So just outside of Tampa. Okay. Um, but yeah, like we've been looking into getting an Airbnb and the people managing them there, it's given me a headache. <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. It's, it's been rough. So, so that'd be awesome if you guys could help me out. Yeah. With let, let's do it, man. Let's do it. Um, so I got to ask this question. Why is driving for dollars the best? And I, I want to preface it with this. I have so many people that are like, hey, you got to do cold calling. And then we just had a guy on the show who was like, hey, radio is the best way to do it. And then <laughs> um, it, like all these different things. And and so you're so passionate, obviously, about driving for dollars. You obviously, it sounds like did it a lot of different ways and didn't have success until you did driving for dollars. But why do you believe it's the best? Uh, a handful of reasons. Um, first and foremost is no one has that specific marketing list or channel. Like let's say radio, anyone can market that same advertisement on the same channel to the same audience on the same days. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. I'm not saying that there's, there's not an, not enough deals to be done. And by doing radio as well, I do radio. Sure. It works. Yeah. But you know, if you're just starting out, no one has your same list. So with cold calling or postcards, you still have to have a marketing list. Right, because right. I text, I postcard, um, I do cold calling, but it's to my driving for dollars list. But but other lists like tax delinquents, probates, those lists, everyone pulls those exact same lists and sends mm -hmm. the exact same postcards and the exact same cold calling scripts and the exact same stuff to those same exact lists. Right. I mean, they're just like people are like I don't want to sell my house. You know, yeah. they have like ten cold calls that day. So, but with driving for dollars, no one has your same list, even if they're driving for dollars. No one has been driving the exact same area within the last month, probably two right. months. If I believe that there was so much competition in this list, I wouldn't teach it to people that live in my market, but I do, mm. right? I That's have awesome. a bunch of successful students in my own market, right? Um, the, the next thing is, is you can scale it. So if you're just starting off and you don't have tens of thousands of dollars, for example, radio, since you mentioned it, I do radio so I can speak about this. Radio contracts, you know, I'm doing 25 ads, a week on a radio station, I'm spending anywhere between 13 and $30 an ad. Mm -hmm. Right. And that adds up quick. Right. I and mean, we're spending thousands of dollars a month to hopefully generate one to two deals every three months. Right. Right. A, a deal can cost six to $7,000. And you know, if you're not good at closing, if you're not mm -hmm. good at, you know, uh, doing a deal and you miss out on that one deal, you may not be profitable anymore on that marketing channel. It's an expensive barrier of entry and you have to commit to time and, and all those things, right? Where with driving for dollars, you can start small, you can build a small list. And if you have a small budget, you spend a small amount of money. And the, the next thing is when you're driving around, you're only identifying properties that have physical signs of neglect, right? So remember like the thorn in the side, right? those properties, you're only spending money on those properties. You're right. not spending, sending m money to people that have really nice houses with really well-kept flower beds. And you know what I mean? Like that mm -hmm. you're just not wasting money that way. Right. Um, the, you know, it's, it's the most inexpensive way and profitable way to go. Well, I, I think too, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm a big believer that when you start something, the best way to do it is do it yourself versus, um, and especially because a lot of people, do not have the money to get started and be like, hey, by the way, I have $50,000 to, to spend. Where's the best marketing? If you got that, that's great. But at the same time, like if I learn driving for dollars and I master that and it's super affordable, now instead of spending money on postcards or radio all the time, I can spend money on bringing someone in to do the driving for dollars for me and go knock on the doors and go and actually talk to the sellers um, and and to me, like that gives you that, that income buffer, that expense buffer to be able to bring in someone and have people helping and automating it with other people and helping them be a part of something really cool. So, uh, yay, nay. Oh yeah, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's, it's funny because like, um, I'm friends with a lot of the other mentors that teach wholesaling and that kind of stuff. And I have so much love and respect for so many of them, not all of them, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but, but so many of them I do. And the cool thing is, is like these very successful coaches 
Um, you know, I, I don't, I shouldn't name drop just because I don't know that they would want me to. Mm -hmm. Um, but these, these wonderful people that are helping students and getting students success, like listen to their podcasts, listen to their success stories from their students. Listen how many, like that's completely away from me, right? right. Like these different wholesaling coaching companies on podcasts and YouTube videos, things like that. Listen to how they found their deal. I promise you 80% of them are going to say driving for dollars. Yeah. Unless they, they teach something like, oh, we teach cold calling. We right. teach, or, or not even cold calling, because they'll be like, yeah, I found it through driving for dollars and I cold called it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like even the cold calling coach is 80%. But if like, they're like, oh, we do deals off radios or, or we, do, we, t we teach radio or we teach TV ads, right? All of their students Oh, we're finding them from this because they're trying to sell their course on that, sure. which is fine. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying if you look at it in a non-biased way of, of success stories out there, it's going to be driving for dollars. Mm, that's good. That's good, man. Well, thank you, Zach, so much for being on the show, man. Uh, tons of value and then just tons of, honestly, no-brainer value for people to go and connect with you now. Um, one more time on how people can connect with you. Uh, just through the website, uh, you said dhdmastery.com? No, no, DFD, so DF. as in driving $4 oh, dollars that's, mastery. That's what that stands for. I've been, I've been racking my brain trying to figure that out. <laughs> driving, for, yeah, I'm driving $4, dollars DFD, DFD mastery. mastery. Okay, perfect. Yep. Uh, Zach, any last words for anyone listening right now? Um, no, just get out there and crush it. You know, even if, even if um, you know, you, you go through the free course, you watch the free content, you're inspired, you go do your first deal. Let me know about it because that's why I'm doing this, right? It makes me feel good. It helps me keep going and continuing to push and to go out of my comfort zone to help people. Um, so that's, that's my big thing. I just want to give back. And, and of course, if you want a mentor, you want to book a call and apply, um, I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, so just, just that. So thanks again for having me. It's been fun. Awesome. Zach, thanks so much for being on the show and helping mm -hmm. our audience to conquer the world of investing. See you next time. All right, guys, the show notes for this one are fearlesskyle.com forward slash Zach Booth. Zach is spelled Z-A-C-K-B-O-O-T-H-E. Don't forget that E on the end. Again, fearlesskyle.com forward slash Zach Booth. And that's where you can get all of his free resources right there, especially on his website, DFD Mastery dot com uh driving for dollars i i hear it all the time as well it seems like cold calling and driving for dollars if you're just starting out seem to be the lowest risk way to be uh getting into wholesaling or real estate investing in general lowest cost way just is going to cost you time that's what it's going to do so and just like anything if you can master it then you can hand it over to someone else automate it outsource it great way to build a business so go check it out again fearlesskyle.com forward slash zach booth thank you for joining us today and for allowing us to help you with conquering the world of investing we'll talk to you next time